to video number two based on the idea of functions and this should be one of the uh, easier lessons that you have here for your summer assignment right here because all we're doing is going to be taking functions and uh, uh, evaluating them, figuring out what uh, values we have for them. So what we're going to look at here, anytime you have a function, f of 2, f of 1, g of 2, negative 2, whatever it is, all that means is you're going to take this number 2 and plug it in for our function. So for f of 2, I'm just going to plug in 2 here. So I now have 3 times 2 plus 5 on top. I have 2 minus 1, and I have 2 to the 4 plus 7. Okay, so this top will become 6 plus 5, which is, excuse me, 11. Okay, and this guy on the bottom, I'll have 1 here, and I'll have 2 to the 4th is 16, plus 7, excuse me, is uh, 23. So my answer should become 11 over 23. All right, so that's all you need to be looking at for something like that. So plug in f of 1. So what that means there, same thing. If I plug in 1 everywhere, 3 times 1 will be 3, plus 5 gives you 8. So 8 up top and on the bottom. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 to the 4th is 1, plus, uh, uh, plus 7 is 8. Well. 0 times 8 is 0, so I have 8 divided by 0. Can I divide by 0? No, we cannot do that. So we always used to say this was an undefined answer, or this was no solution, or we said like uh, dips for some of our uh, uh, fun times in math. Uh, what we're going to end up finding out is we're going to end up calling this infinity, and we'll explain more about that uh, in future lessons. But what you should be looking at here is just realizing that undefined, when you're dividing by zero, you're going to be getting some sort of idea possibly with a infinity. So we'll talk more about that down the road. All right, g of negative 2. So what we're going to do is try to plug in negative 2. Now what I'm going to uh, first do is plug in negative 2 to all this. So if I do that, let's uh, change colors here. So negative 2 cubed, negative 2 to the third power will be negative 8, plus 4 times negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 minus 12 times negative 2. So this is negative 8 plus 16, and then this will become plus 24, which should give me an answer of 32. Now, something you can notice here. Uh, if it's easier to simplify one of these functions, I'm going to suggest you do that immediately. What I mean by that is, well, these all have an x, so let's pull out an x from it and see what I have left. Now I have a trinomial. Well, can I factor that trinomial? Well, yes I can. Factors of 12 subtracting the 4 will be 6 and 2. So I should have x plus 6, x minus 2. Now I can plug in negative 2 into this guy just as easily, which means I would have gotten, if I did it that way, negative 2 for here, negative 2 plus 6 becomes positive 4, and negative 2 minus 2 becomes negative 4. So when I do that, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, Negative 8 times negative 4 equals positive 32. So either way, I should get the exact same answer. All right, let's do that for plugging in positive 2. Let's use the simplified version. Plugging in positive 2 here, I would get 2. Plugging in 2 here, I would get 8. And plugging in here, I would get 0. And this is why it's so much easier, because I would get 2 times 8 times 0, which I can tell immediately is 0. I could very easily be making a mistake here, making this 8 and then making this 16, and then making this minus 24. So it's just an easier step. If you can simplify first, I would suggest doing that. And let's do the same thing here for, uh, for 5 and 6, dealing with h. I have a fraction, just like in our last video. Let's try to simplify it by factoring. So I have x plus 3 and x plus 4 when I factor the top. When I factor the bottom, I should get uh, x plus 3, x minus 4 here. All right, so if I plug in these values, well, first, something I can kind of look at here is that <clears throat> x plus 3s will kind of cancel each other out. So no matter what I get, I can end up canceling those guys out, which is nice, because now I can just plug in 0, and then when I do that, I get positive 4 up top, negative 4 on the bottom. So that means this guy is going to be uh, positive 4 over negative 4, which is just negative 1. Okay, when I plug in negative 3, though, and here's the issue. Excuse me. If I try to use this factored form where things cancel, well, I can say, well, maybe, yeah, I could plug in negative 3 and get, you know, 1 over negative 7 and get an answer of negative 1, 7. Well, that is technically not true because I need to be able to do it without having anything factored. Meaning, I plug in negative 3, I would get 0 here. This guy would become 4. Or, I'm sorry, 
4 times negative 3 is 1. And then the second guy would be uh, 0 times negative 7. So I really get 0 over 0, which we've discussed briefly, but that's an indeterminate form because 0 times anything is 0, but we said up here anything divided by 0 is undefined, infinity. So how do I know? Is this 0? Is this infinity? Well, technically the answer is that it kind of is negative 1 7. But what I'm looking at mainly right now is that we have something that we don't know, 0 over 0 undefined. Okay, so that's the main thing to look at for right now. Um, negative 1 7 technically is not the answer, uh, but when we get to talking about limits, that's actually going to be a very important answer. So let's keep that in mind. All right, last two problems on here. They want to know when these two functions are discontinuous. Discontinuous. That just means that uh, you, if you plug in this number, you have something that will not work. With almost anything that's dealing with a fraction, and fractions don't work when the bottom equals zero. So for f, when does the bottom equal zero? Well, it's already factored. That's what you want to do. Get the bottom to be factored. When does this guy equal zero? Well, that's when x equals one. When does this equal zero? x to the fourth would equal negative seven. Well, anything to an even power can never be negative. So this part will never equal zero. So the only time f is discontinuous is when x equals, uh, not negative 1, I'm sorry, x equals positive 1. Okay, g, when is this discontinuous? When you have domain issues is what you should be thinking. Well, that never happens here because I can, there's no number that I'm unable to plug into this function. I'm never dividing by 0. So this is uh, always a continuous function for g. Now for h, Excuse me, for h, when is h discontinuous? Same thing, when is the bottom equal zero? That's when x equals negative three, and when x equals positive four, because that's when my denominators equal zero. All right, and the last thing, when does the function f of x equal zero? Well, that means that the function equaling zero means that the, if the whole thing equals zero, that means the top equals zero. So three x plus five has to equal zero, meaning three x equals negative five, or x equals negative 5 over 3. So this happens when x equals negative 5 thirds. So when a function equals 0, you set the top equal to 0. When you're looking for discontinuities, um, meaning holes and asymptotes for back in the day, uh, that's when you're going to look at the bottom of the function equaling 0. There you have it. Again, don't forget to uh, take care of the video or of the uh, homework assignment and get that turned in as well.